Okay, electric potential. Uh, we're going to define electric potential today. Um, uh, we're going to start off with a discussion of uh, you know potential energy, and then we'll uh, use that to define what electric potential is, uh, and then we'll talk about units and so on. Uh, we'll introduce the volt, uh, which isn't just a great car; it's also uh, a unit of measure. And then uh, we'll talk about electric potential in a uniform uh, electric field. So <clears throat> let's talk about uh, you know what is potential energy, and we've got two kinds so far that we we, we talked about. Uh, we talked about um, the potential energy of gravity and the potential energy of a spring. Now, in both of these cases, um, we said that the potential energy is really the work that can be done by a conservative force. That's one way of thinking about uh, what is potential energy. So it's the work that could be done. But really, it's a, it's a chain. You know, we really are concerned with changes in, in potential energy that you know, when we're using them in problems. Um, and so we said that a change in potential energy is equal to, well, look, if you have a conservative force of some kind, F sub C, and it's doing work, dot ds. You know, this is the work equation, right? Force times displacement gives us um, work. But if the conservative force is doing positive work, what's happening to our potential energy? We're changing it, but we're losing potential energy, right? I mean, if you if you hold a, a a rock over the ground, compared to the ground, it has positive um, potential energy, right? If you release the rock, it's going to lower down, and gravity um, is is directed downwards, and the displacement is downwards. So the force and displacement are in the same direction. So gravity is doing positive work but we're losing potential energy. So um, poten this is one way of defining what potential energy is, or at least a change in potential energy. Um, so this is, in fact, this is the equation we used um, when we were talking about gravitational potential energy, um, uh, both in a uniform gravity field, where we turned out to be MGH, right, or in a in a, in, in a planetary gravitational field where we define zero to be infinitely far away and we got negative GMM over R. Uh, with a spring, uh, you know, you, you put in a, a negative KX here and you get one half KX squared as the potential energy of a compressed or stretched spring. So now we're going to use the same idea to get uh, uh, the potential energy in an electric field. And that is if I have a change in um, a, uh, a potential energy within a um, that's stored up in a uh, an electric field, it's going to be equal to negative the electric force dotted with some displacement like that. Okay. Now. Um, but we're going now. By the way, uh, like especially with gravity, we're dealing with a gravity field here, and this could be like this force was m g, right? That that was the uh, when we're dealing with gravitational potential energy, the gravitational force is the mass times the gravitational field. Now. That could be, uh, you know, GMM over R squared, or it could just be uh, 9.8 meters per second squared if it's constant near the Earth's surface. Um, so we're going to express this electric force in terms of the electric field. Now, just like we did in terms of the gravitational field up here. So we're going to say delta U is equal to uh, negative, uh, and now this is going to be um, uh, the electric force. Well, let's think about what is the electric force in terms of the electric field. 
it's equal to the charge on my particle times the electric field. Remember, that this is really what um, electric fields do. Electric fields apply forces to objects that have charge. So here's the charge on my object. Here's the strength of the electric field where that object finds itself. And so this is the force that nature is you know, applying to that, uh, to that particle. And so we can just say that this is Q times the electric field dotted with Ds. And so, you know, if, if, if like later we're going to talk about a uniform electric field, this would be a constant. Or, um, you know, this could be the electric field of a point charge. We can plug that in there and figure it out. Um, now, here's something that's a little bit confusing when it's being introduced. Um, this, this, is, this equation describes a change in electric potential energy. But electric potential is not the same thing as electric potential energy. And the language here gets a little weird. And, it, and, it, and it's weird because of the way that electromagnetism was discovered by you know various scientists over you know a long period of time the language they used uh, is a little awkward and sorry you just have to get used to it because it's too late to change it what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by the charge on my particle okay and so I'm going to get delta U, that's the change in potential energy, divided by the charge is equal to negative um, E dot dS. And this potential energy per unit charge, a, a change in potential energy per unit charge, is what we call, and this by definition is what we call a change in potential. And we use the letter V for potential, electric potential. Now, the way we use the language in here is, um, so let me describe the nomenclature here. Um, we use potential, we use electric potential, And we use voltage. We're going to get to voltage here in a minute. These three terms mean the same thing. Okay, potential, electric potential, voltage. And here we're talking about a change in potential, a change in electric potential, a change in voltage. They're used interchangeably. Usually when we're dealing with an electrostatic condition, which is what we're studying right now, we'll use potential or electric potential. When we get to currents and so on, we quite often talk about voltage. Yes? So in terms of this, what is delta U? OK. Delta U is the change in, uh, well, you know what? It's a change in, um, it's the work I had to do to move against the field. Um, and I, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to describe that here. In a little bit. Let's talk about units first. Sometimes it's easier to talk about units. What are the units for potential energy? Joules. Joules. What are the units for a charge? Coulomb. Coulomb. So this change in voltage or whatever is a has units of joules per coulomb. And a joule per coulomb, by definition, is a volt. And a volt is abbreviated with a capital V. Now, by the way, uh, we quite often use for voltage, for the variable, we use a capital V. And for the units, we use a capital V. So it can be a little bit confusing. I, I think it's the only quantity I can think of offhand where the variable and the unit is the same letter. So you just have to be careful when you're doing your work. You know, not to cancel out the unit with the variable. <laughs> no, I'm 
No, I put the units in. I always put the units in. Right. You're going to have VB. V equals 10V. <laughs> All right. Now, um, now let's let's talk about this from uh, a you know from a, a real kind of application here. Um, what if I've got a point charge here, um, and it's got an electric field? Am I on camera? Yeah. Okay. And it's got this electric field that's spreading out in three-dimensional space. And so there's my E field. And we know what E is. It's, it's K, Q over R squared in the R hat direction. <clears throat> now, here's my little point charge. Now, let's move it from one place to another. So here's... Let's call this location one. So this is R1. This little dashed line here represents my position away from the, uh, the charge over here. So this is going to be Q naught. And this we'll just call this Q. Now, if I'm going to move this to another place, I let's say I'm going to move it closer. OK? I'm going to move it closer. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to go and I'm going to move it right here. Now, I think you can see that, look, if I, um, here's my charge, and it's got positive charge, and this has got positive charge, so they repel each other, right? Now, if I'm going to move it closer, i got to do some work, right? I, the outside universe, has to push on this thing to make it go to get it there. So now what is the result of all the work I did? I gained potential energy. There was a change in potential energy. So if I call this, you know, R1, here's R2. I increased, I increased the potential energy of my charge. Okay, because look, the if yes, both. Okay, they, they aren't the same thing, but I'm divide. Okay, Shh, just patience. Okay, so now think about this. I take this charge, I push it against the electric field. I've done work, force through displacement. That work results in a gain in potential energy of my charge, of my test charge. Now, if I take that change in potential energy of my test charge and then divide it by the test charge, I now have the change in voltage or the change in potential of, of, of my charge. And the thing is, is that that makes it you know, strictly dependent on where I am compared to this point charge. Yes. So let's, um, yeah, let us um, do that. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, okay. So let's figure out what, what the potential energy is for this change in potential uh, energy. Well, I'll divide it by Q naught. Okay, and so this for a point charge is equal to negative um, KQ over R squared. And then, now, here's one thing I think you can see. That if I move, let's say I, I move my little test charge from here, but I keep the same radius. I move it over here. Do you see that I, I didn't do any work against the field? Yes. Okay. Um, the field is trying to push me out. If I just keep it the same distance away, 
I didn't do any work against the field and it's very easy to do that. So I didn't change the potential of my test charge. Um, if I didn't do any work against the field, I didn't change the electric potential. Uh, it's like uh, carrying something in a gravity field but holding it level. Like if I, if I carry a book and I just you know move that book across like this, okay, I'm not changing its height. I'm not changing the gravitational potential energy. Same thing here. If I just move from here over to here, I didn't change anything. Yes? Does the test charge have potential or is it the field that we're talking about that has the potential? Okay. Charge has potential energy. This Q right here is not my test charge. It's the Q that's in here. So I use the test charge to figure out what the potential is in space around this test charge. Now the test charge itself has its own potential, but I'd have to use another test charge to figure out what that is. So in this, we're finding the potential of the thing in the middle by the changes in potential energy of the thing out there. Exactly. That's beautiful. Okay, so we've got the delta U for the change in potential of the test charge divided by the actual quantity of the test charge. Mm -hmm. equals the integral of k times the quantity of charge in the big cluster thing in the middle divided by the radius um, divided by our distance from here to the location of my test charge the new one or the old one well we haven't put my limits in here yet my r initial or my r final i'm not done yet oh wait r is still a variable then i don't even have a dr in here yet yeah. okay r is the variable r now is just just hold on a second okay dot okay ds now let's let's uh talk about this for a second this ds it can be any change in uh position of my test charge so let's say i went from here over to here there's my ds magnified hugely okay um only the radial component of my displacement is going to change my potential energy or my potential energy per unit charge. So I don't, when I go r hat dot ds, that can change my integral to just dr. r hat dot ds means I'm only going to, I only care about my change in distance from the center of my charge over here. Now this, huh? And then we're going to go from R initial to R final. Let's just keep it general. I, I chose these two, but it can be anything. Now, you've done this integral before. We did it when we uh, derived the uh, potential energy of, of a gravity field. It was the same mathematical structure. We just had, instead of K, we had big G. Instead of Q, we had the, the mass of my planet. But r squared was the same and dr was the same. So let's pull out k and q. Let's rewrite this integral. Ah. Pull out the k and the q. r initial to r final. Now 1 over r squared is r to the <laughs> negative 2 dr. So let's um, figure out what uh, this is. This is uh, negative kq. And this is going to be, um, well, we're going to add 1 to negative 2. That makes it negative 1. And divide by the new exponent, you know, just using the power rule here. So this is going to be 1 over uh, negative r evaluated from our initial to our final. And so this, uh, of course, if we go up here, delta u over q naught, that's delta v. So now delta v can be equal to, well, look, the negatives cancel. kq over r final 
minus kq over r initial. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing we did with gravitation. Um, where can I make my reference location from my, my point charge up here? Where can I be? Where am I going to measure the, the potential energy per unit charge now from? Well, what do we do with the Earth when we're dealing with planetary problems? Where did I make my initial position? Nope. Infinite, infinitely far away. So, what I'm going to do is let our initial equal infinity. Okay? Now, if I'm infinitely far away, okay, let's say I have no potential at all. But now I'm going to start approaching this from infinity. So, okay, here's my charge. Let's say that, whoa, let's say that right here, right here, this is infinite. It's so far away, it's off my piece of paper. Whoa. So we go here, and then infinity happens, and then you're right here, okay? Okay. Yeah. It, it, in my world, it, it works fine. Okay, now, hush, be quiet, Seth. Now, so the, now I'm going to move in. Now, I have to do work, shh, I have to do work against the electric field. So I'm gaining potential. Now remember, how is this different than gravity? What's true about a gravity field? It's an attractive force, not a repulsive force. So therefore, my potential energy was getting less and less and less. And that's why we had negative gravitational potential energy. But with this positive, um, a positive uh, point charge here, uh, as I push my test charge towards it, I'm gaining potential energy. Divide that by the charge on the test charge, I now am gaining potential or voltage. Okay? And so when I, when I let our initial equal infinity, this guy goes to zero. And so I can now say, that delta V is equal to V final minus, you know, V initial, right? But I'm going to say, oh, look, okay, I found a place where the initial potential will always be zero. So really what I've got is V equals KQ over R. And this equation is the potential of a point charge. So if I, if I have a point charge here, and I'm some distance away over here, I can figure out what my potential is. In volts, joules per coulomb. Okay. But what if my electric field is um, uniform? And this is actually really uh, pretty easy. If I have an electric field like this, that's a, uni a uniform field, mm -hmm. okay, so here's my, there's a problem just like this on the test, and some of, and some of you are going to, I don't care, <laughs> all right, um, so let's say I'm going to take, here's my little positive test charge. And it's located right here. So here's our initial. Wait, can I, I feel like it's going to... oh, <laughs> Let the record show that Vishal is sharpening his pencil in the middle of my lecture. I'm so sorry. On you, you look like you're pretty upset. The question denied. It's for the record. Yes. All right. This is, I am judge, jury, and executioner in this class. All right. Now let's say I'm going to move this guy right here. So here's our final. I don't know where my origin is. I'll just make one up. Let's put the origin right there. So here's our initial. 
and here's our final. So therefore, look, here's uh, there's my delta R. And I want to know what's the change in voltage here? Okay, well, delta V is equal to negative E dot Yes, that's my basic definition. But what do you see about uh, what's true about E now? E is a constant. So what happens to it? It comes out of the integral. And this just becomes delta V equals negative uh, E dot delta R. Now here's where some students will mess up. Because notice that in my drawing here, well, people forget about the dot product, okay? Remember, this is really uh, negative E delta R cosine theta. And you got to remember that cosine theta. Or you, if, if, if like uh, E is all in the I hat direction and delta R has an I hat and, and J hat component, only the I hat components multiply. Okay, and so, well, I mean, I'm, all, I'm just taking the dot product of two vectors. Remember that E is a vector, delta R is a vector, so you, and, and, and um, potential is a scalar. So really what, what this is a measure is, measure of, is I move from here to here, how much potential energy per unit charge am I uh, am I changing? And you figure it out. So if you're in a uniform field, the only thing that really changes is it. It's 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 a happier problem because you don't have to worry about this integral here. Yeah, you, you, you're just multiplying them. But remember, you're multiplying two vectors. You're taking the scalar product of two vectors, and you you do it like that. Okay. Now, do the example problems. Go through the example problems very carefully before you attempt the. Uh, the uh, actual problems and read the book there's a couple things I had to gloss over but that's a good start <laughs>